With the battle between Isaac Pitbull Cruz and Jose Valenzuela now concluded, here are some of the best reactions from the pros. Jesse, can I just get your reaction real quick for Fight High, my guy? I love it, I like, there you go. Just want to get your reaction to the Rayo win for Fight High. What you think, bro? Uh, he fought the, the perfect fight. He did what he had to do. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that it was closer than maybe what the judge had it, or was the decision way off? Or I, I thought he won unanimous, to be honest. I felt like he won almost every round. No doubt. Yeah. What's next for Rayo, Jesse? I'll uh, say whoever. A rematch for Pitbull? Okay, whatever, whatever brings more money. There you go. There you go. Thank you, babe. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep, Fight High. My God is real! You told me, Ryu! My God is real! Oh. Ah. Wait, wait, wait. That's it! Wait, wait, wait. That's it! The only one! The king stays king! Now you and you and Ryu! Unification! I mean, look at the trainer he got. Robert Garcia. Multiple champion, multiple. Uh, World champions he's been, like 20 already. So, you know, my hat's off to my compa Robert. Did a great job. It looked like uh, a, a potential opportunity to fight Tank was on the line. What do you think of Ryo versus Tank? Hey, that'll be a great fight. Uh, I'd love to see it. What do you guys think, Ryo? Oh, man. Congrats to him, man. We didn't see too much, but hey, Ryo, people, they're hell of a fighter, bro. Great fighters, man. Great fighters. Pitbull, Ryo, how do you see it? Thank you. I don't see too much of it. Yeah, because of some. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, bro. Obviously, showing as one of the best one to fight. Being a guy that you want to fight, what do you want to fight? Um, I want to fight whoever the fight the fans want me to fight. You know, I take all the tough, the tough fights. I'm never dug or dog, no, nobody. So you know, I'm here to fight the best. Listen, you mentioned that. Think about Ryo. He just pulled the upset against uh, Isaac Cruz. I would like, I would like, I would like. I, I think I was the draw for Pitbull Cruz and Valenzuela. I was the draw one, four, one, fourteen, one, one fourteen for both fighters. Was it? Was the draw? I think. I think. Uh, uh, keep uh, keep the belts, uh, people. Could. Last thing, do you like Ryo versus Javante Davis? It looks like they were fighting. I for would that. like to see the rematch, people. Cruz, people first, Ryo, so not Javante. Meanwhile, with this Mexican showdown now ended, the enthusiasm that led to this occasion was anything but ordinary. From open threats to massive callouts to various contemporaries, both fighters were in the very best shape as compared to what they had been throughout their respective careers. Cruz, known for his tenacious fighting style and aggressive approach, went into this fight with a confident mindset and a clear vision of moving forward to fight his longtime nemesis, Tank Davies, to finally hash out the ongoing debate about who is the best in the division, especially after Gravanta announced that he might have a free slot to take on on any opponent later this year. Yo me siento más que listo para poderlo enfrentar a, el, al final de este año o el, el, iniciando el año que viene. Yeah, he, uh, he he can be ready for him. He, depending on uh, what's happening in this fight, he's very focused on this fight. He don't want to talk too much about it. But it, if it happened at the end of the year. Before the much awaited fight, Cruz also took part in an open workout to exhibit his exceptional style and imposing presence despite being at a clear disadvantage concerning his height and overall size to squash any rumors about him being intimidated by Jose, who surpasses him in both height and power. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not
Noticing this drama brewing between the fighters, many boxing pros and analysts stepped forward to convey their opinions about this epic fight with Teddy Atlas being one of them. Known for his in-depth and meticulous analysis concerning the fighters, Teddy predicted the fight to go in Cruz's favor by a decision which in itself represents a lot about how tough of an opponent Jose can be. Teddy stated, It's going to be a good fight, and it's going to be great to watch. I'm going to pick Cruz to win a decision over Valenzuela. Commenting on the fan favorite Cruz, Teddy was all praise for the young fighter and his great ability to make the fight exhilarating for the fans by utilizing his persistent punching style, which is not only great for taking apart his opponents, but from the spectator's point of view, it is engaging to watch. Teddy stated, who doesn't like him? His style, what he brings his energy, his determination, his non-stop punching from bell to bell. People are going to watch that fight because of this guy, as there is never a dull moment with him. Teddy then went on to scrutinize Jose and his most recent performances. Though thinking that he had a lot to improve before he could think about defeating a fighter like Cruz, Teddy still thought that Jose was not someone who would sit back considering that he himself is an eminent puncher who, if trained properly, could give a hard time to any fighter. Additionally, Teddy reflected on the fight between Rio Valenzuela and Chris Colbert, where Jose scored the supposed best knockout of the year to further prove his point on how Jose can be a ferocious adversary against anyone in his weight division if he concentrates on the objective at hand. Teddy stated, I also love Jose Valenzuela. He's a 25-year-old kid who scored probably the knockout of the year when he knocked out Chris Colbert as he knocked him out cold. He's a good puncher, and he's a game-tough guy. You gotta be a good puncher to have a chance to slow down Pitbull. Raleigh Romero, who is a well-known lightweight champion, picked Ryo as his winner, which might have come as a surprise as many pros and fans were anticipating Cruz to win over Jose, bearing in mind that Cruz went into this fight with a near-perfect record with very minor hiccups. Or, or, or no. Ryo. Huh? Ryo. Ryo wins? Why? This you serious, though? This also sharing the same opinion as Raleigh, Robert Garcia, Jose's trainer, and a former lightweight champion thought that many people had underestimated Jose after his announcement about fighting Cruz, stating how he did not measure up to Cruz's elite standard. Assured of his fighter's dedication to accomplishing his goal, Robert predicted Ryo to triumph over Cruz with a knockout in the later stages of the match. I'm predicting a pretty good upset. Ryo's training good, training hard and good shape. And uh, I think they probably underestimated Ryo. A-Round knockout. All right, shock the world. Stay tuned. Robert also mentioned certain points that Jose had been told to pay great heed to during the fight if he wanted to have a chance against a fighter like Cruz, who is notorious for his impeccable chin, which can withstand continuously aggressive punches. According to Garcia, the most desecrating thing for Jose during this fight could be the temptation to slack off against Pitbull, who thrives on an opportunity like this. Robert stated, Pitbull is a tough guy he's going to keep coming. Jose needs to be in great shape. It can't be like doing great in the first half and then fading in the last half. There's no way we can afford that. He's got to be in great shape to do everything until the last round. With the WBA super lightweight title on the line, from the very start, things were heated between both the fighters. As for Cruz, it was him defending his title against a fighter who only a year ago was regarded as the most sought-after lightweight candidate with an out-of-the-ordinary punching power and boxing IQ for his age and limited experience, which he worked on diligently during the camp to prepare himself for the formidable opponent that Cruz can be. Chris Algieri, a former welterweight champion, thought that in the end, it would most certainly be Isaac who would win this fight, as he is an extremely resilient fighter who stands his ground no matter who the person against him is. Chris also recalled the spectacular knockout victory that Isaac Cruz scored in his last fight against Rolando Romero, which not only sparked a huge debate about the abilities possessed by the 26-year-old fighter, but this fight became a sort of classic Mexican bout that marked the beginning of the Pitbull mania throughout the world. Chris stated, Pitbull mania, I think is a real thing. He just had that big win over Raleigh Romero. That really sent shockwaves throughout the world in terms of people tuning into Isaac Cruz, and this made him a star, and that was only his last fight. Not undermining Jose as a fighter, Chris still emphasized the fact that Jose, although a major underdog, had his own attributes that could give him a hard time to pitbull, and if he stuck to the well-crafted plan by his team and his gut instincts, he might hold well in this bout. He added, Does Valenzuela stand a chance against Isaac Cruz? Yes, because he can punch, and he is good, but it's definitely a tall order as both guys like to be in shootouts. Isaac Cruz, he's coming in the front door 
he's going to try and beat you up from pillow to post. And Valenzuela, he's a sharpshooter. He can hit, he can punch, and he finds those little gaps. A major part of Isaac's team, Sean Gibbons, who is also the president of MP Promotions, had an unbiased opinion before going into this fight because of the proficient abilities that were possessed by both the fighters, especially Isaac, who is without a doubt a giant in this weight division in terms of technique and overall record. However, Sean still believed that for Jose to counter Isaac's precise attacks, he had to move around a lot to shield against them. But this can prove to be rather tedious and could affect Jose's performance negatively. Pitbull's power and his strength, and he tries to run and box, but he, he, you know, he's a flat-footed guy, so he can try to move some, but Isak is very good at cutting the ring off. Um, so I just, I just think it's going to come down to who lands the bigger shots, and that's who's going to win the fight. Sean also expressed his enthusiasm for this fight, stating how these are the types of fights that bring in the most numbers, as you had a classic Mexican rivalry between two fighters who were not only entertaining to watch, but they also left the spectators impressed by their level of boxing skills. Sean also went as far as to claim that this would be the main event of the night, which in itself was a very odd take that many people disagreed with. I think it's a, a fight of the night type of fight. You have two very aggressive fighters, two Mexican warriors. Um, I've seen Rio Valenzuela fight, and he brings the heat, he brings the smoke, and I don't have to tell you what Isak, Mike Tyson, Pitbull Cruz brings. So I think it's gonna be one heck of a fight. Pauly Malignaghi, who appeared on the same show as Chris, gave his take on this fight. And according to Pauly, this fight would most probably go in Cruz's favor, considering the fact that despite Jose being a tough contender in the lightweight division, he is still not on the par to land solid wins against guys like Isaac. Pauly stated, Jose is good enough to get the wins as he causes some upsets. I don't know if he's going to be able to beat Pitbull here. He's got his opportunity to win a world championship, but Pitbull is more compact. He's a little tighter. I could see this being a real shootout with Valenzuela wound up on his back. Pauly also weighed in on the the things that Jose seemed to fall short of one of them being his marketability and the fact that though he is an admirable fighter, he still lacks the tendency to maintain a steady career, which has resulted in him being not considered by many major fighters or their promoters, despite people comments on how these things don't matter in the long run. Pauly stated, if it was about wins and losses don't matter, and it was about making great fights and being exciting, well, this guy would be in demand constantly in main events, but he's not in main events, is he? Because he takes L sometimes. On the other hand, while talking about the overall fight, Pauly thought that would be a huge fight during the event and would generate a lot of audience, especially the Mexican audience. No thanks to Pitbull Cruz, who was a fan favorite from the very moment that this fight was first orchestrated. And this card combined with the one involving Andy Ruiz Jr. and Gerald Miller would give the fans a chance to see an ultimate Mexican showdown under the same roof in the same night. The case uh, at California, LA in general, Southern California in general has a big Mexican population. This card has guys like Pitbull Cruz on it. It has Andy Ruiz on it. Uh, you know, initially it had Virgil Ortiz before the Tim Zhu fight fell out. But, you know, I, I could see that uh, Southern California, Mexican, Chicano influence there. And so that you could see how Pitbull Cruz would be a fan favorite on this night. And, of course, it's not really hard to be a, for Pitbull Cruz to be a fan favorite with, with all cultures across the board. He's a, he's a fun fighter to watch regardless of whether you're Mexican or not. Gio Cabrera, a notable name in lightweight boxing, predicted that the chances for Valenzuela to win this fight are quite high if he keeps up his momentum and sticks to his habitual demeanor about giving his opponents a tough time inside the ring. Being someone who has faced Pitbull in the past, Gio emphasized the unmatched skill set that Cruz owns, which is enough to dismantle anyone in the lightweight division. Gio stated, Ryo is ballsy and damn good. He'll give trouble to anybody in the lightweight division for sure, and I think he's got a good chance at beating Pitbull. Being somewhere in the middle, Sean Ziddle, a notable boxing analyst and reporter, appeared alongside Sean Porter on his podcast and stressed on the main ups and downs of both the fighters before they went into this fight. According to him, the outcome of the fight depended solely on the techniques that would be displayed by the fighters. Sean stated, I got Pitbull winning, but it is interesting because Roya is a talented offensive fighter with real power, so it's like you'll be watching it like, okay, let's see if Roya can land something. So there'll be that suspense there for sure. Talking about the best strategy that could be employed by Jose to stand his ground against a fighter like Cruz, Sean suggested that for Jose to have any chance at winning, he must rely on his aggressive style rather than hesitating and falling back, which is a classic mistake against Cruz as he very easily corners you once he senses that his opponent might be falling back. To give some hindsight, Sean recalled the match between Cruz and Rolando, where Raleigh tried to box too much, which came back to haunt him, as in the last rounds his body was completely shattered from the vicious attacks that Cruz landed his way. Sean stated, he certainly can't 
can't do what Raleigh did, which is try to box too much and run him into the perfect shot too much because Raleigh found himself getting backed up pillar to post. He added, so Jose can't try to box too much. He's got to take chances and exchange with him and risk getting knocked out trying to knock him out. Give yourself a shot. You have real power. And this guy does come forward. Yes, he's defensively responsible. Yes, he holds his hands well. Yes, he tucks his chin well. Very fundamentally sound. But let your heavy artillery go. Sean Porter, being a welterweight world champion, gave a dubious statement about how this fight would have the potential to either way, considering the fact that both fighters Cruz and Jose have their strong points with Jose's being his ability to land a solid punch. And for Cruz, he is a fighter who shines best in terms of defense and the ability to land shattering counterattacks as he tactically tries to draw his opponent out of their safe zone. Pitbull does pack a punch, maybe quite not not quite as heavy at 140, but between his the, the punch output as well as the quality of each punch, I mean, he's throwing hard with every single punch that he's got. Pitbull, that is, I think is up for Valenzuela. If, if, if I was coaching him, I would tell Valenzuela to take those small step back and be ready to counter. We know that Val that Pitbull is going to be out of position with every single punch that he throws because he's winging everything. Small step back, counter, and then turn. Though unable to decide on a potential winner in this case, one thing that Sean seemed to be quite sure about was that this would not be a decision fight, but the outcome of this fight would be decided by a knockout, which could be from either side. I see this being a, sh a shootout, and um, I don't think both guys, uh, I don't think this is a, a decision fight. This is this is going to be a knockout win for one of those guys. Sharing the same opinion about how this fight would end by a potential knockout, Jose Benavidez Sr. stated that this fight would be the most exhilarating fight of the whole event, as it is not every day that two Mexican boxers like Cruz and Roya go at one another with a world title on the line. He said, you can't miss this fight because this fight is going to be exciting. I think this fight can steal the show because you got two Mexicans coming at each other, and I guarantee you there is going to be a knockout. So in the end, what do you guys think about this fight and the performance displayed by both these Mexican giants? Was it worth the watch? Tell us about your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel.